Hey, so I'm going to go with you today over how to build the basic structure of a common pop song, about how to add layers and take things out just to keep it interesting, and just some errors that I tend to see people make early on while they're making their first GarageBand song. So let's jump straight in. We're going to go to Empty Project. Uh, when we first come in, it's going to ask us to choose a track. Uh, we could do Drummer if we wanted to. I, I don't want to do that today because we're going to make a, a sort of a synth beat opposed to like a rock style even though this is a lot of good things a lot of control the drummer gives you uh, we're just going to do it straight from the loops today so hit create we don't really need the keyboard we won't need this control pan panel here so we can go to view uh, hide the library because that's the library here we don't want that and we won't need the smart controls we're just going to need the loops right here so let's click on this uh, so you could start off with a beat um, for today, I think I'm just going to go look for a synth part. There's one uh, called a float. Let's see, synth. Yeah, let's use that. I'm going to drag it in here, and you'll notice it says synth art dot one. Uh, if I were to copy, so Command C and put my track head at the end of eight, paste it. You'll notice the second one's called two. It's the same thing, just copy. If I didn't want to do that, if I want just to just extend what I have, I can just drag this out by grabbing the you know, bracket here, and it'll still be synth one. That's not really relevant or important to you. It just helps you keep up with um, parts. So, if, for example, if I were to cut this later on, I would know where one, which one was one, which one was two. So it keeps me kind of aligned for where I'm at in the song. Um, when looking for something, you can just go over here to instrument and choose what it is that you. Uh, we're interested in Let me this right here. So you can go find a drum, or you can go for a genre, sort of a dance beat and stuff. So I start off. You'll notice that this is on four four. And when I looked for a float, put it back up here. Uh, this is this is thirty two beats, which is four times eight, thirty two. Um, so this is eight measures long or thirty two beats long. The rule is if you're in 4-4, it's usually good to introduce something uh, at the end of every four measures. So at the end of four, at the beginning of five, you would introduce your next part. At the end of eight, you would introduce your next part. And that's when you typically make changes. And this is, I mean, this obviously is not a hard and fast rule, but it's a good rule to follow when you're first making music because people naturally um, know where the beat is when they listen to a song. They can find the downbeat. Um, and it, it, they know the rhythm, and you're matching your song to the rhythm, and it gives you an advantage. This is what people want to dance to, and they know they should know where the next beat comes in. If you put it like sort of janky, like halfway through a measure, you know it, it just throws people off, and it, you want them to be able to expect it so they can enjoy it. So we have this art piece, which is like a synth part. Um, let, maybe let's add a. I don't know. Um, let's add a beat. Okay, that's something I, I like. So we add that at the end of four. So we'll just have a rhythm. Okay, cool. By the way, I have this dead track up here. I don't have anything on it. It's always good to delete it. And it's also good to make sure that you keep your track separate. A float is on its own track head. Fired up will be here. I never want to put another beat and another you know loop that doesn't match in here because it makes it easier for me to find. And later on when we add effects to our song, if you can find it quickly, you can you can have more control over your song. So, you know, that, that song's okay. It's just, you know, it would get really repetitive over time. So let's say that we let that continue for a little bit longer to the end of 12. Uh, and we decide that we want to change it up. My suggestion would be also, let's look for it. Okay. So I found like a little piano part. That might come in here and add like a little, little bit more effects here. Um, I don't want to start it right when this one starts, so maybe I can add it here at the end of eight. Let's see. Okay. 
And I might want to extend that out a little bit. So at the end of 12, it might be smart for me to stop playing this synth part on the top and give just these two a chance to do something together. So um, I could extend this out for another four measures, but that would get kind of boring again. So you can play with that rule, but make it an even number. So let's do it for two measures, half of four. And so let's hear what that sounds like. It almost feels like you would want one more of those, but how about we do it for another two, just this part, and get rid of the beat. So by slowly dropping things out, it keeps things interesting, but my ear still has something to focus on. Then I can come back over here, grab this whole fired up beat, copy it with Command C, and let's zoom in just a little, zoom out a little bit so you can see better. And at the end of 16, uh, I hit Command V and paste it right there in the right spot and get that beat going again. So here's what we have right now. So at this point, it would be a good idea to introduce another melody line. Uh, we can find whatever we want it right now. So um, let's see, there's something else. Now we don't want drums. So let's find. Well, let's go to instrument. Let's maybe find another type of piano. So that doesn't sound like normally what you want to go with. Let's just, for, for the sake of this, let's drag it in here. And we're going to drag it to a new track part. Let's give the, the drums like two measures to play with, you know, kind of do its own thing. And I'm going to drag this out. So it's in there for a total of um, you know, four measures. So here we go. At this point, it might be a good idea to keep that running and add back in your initial melody. So a good principle is to always like give your, your listeners a break from the main melody, but bring it back in. So let's go with what we started with, the afloat synth. It's Command C, and it sounds like it might be good to put that in right here at the... Let's put it halfway through this one right here. Uh, so at the beginning of 23, at the end of 22, essentially. So here's what it sounds like. So that kind of mixes well together. Another thing I tend to see people do though is they want to put a lot of beats in at the same time. They'll have like another beat down here while this one's going and it sounds so cluttered. Just avoid that at all costs. Like keep balance between your different parts. So uh, overall, this is the basic structure. And at the end, by the time we're done, you know, you might want to introduce this 70s choral rift again, sort of build into everything being there. That could be a little chaotic. Uh, let's just try that really fast and see what that sounds like. And extend this. And let's see what, what it sounds like with all of them there, if, it, if it's too much. No, that's okay. That's not too bad. And something I like to do is I like to take one part that stands out a lot to me, like I like this coral roof thing. I'd come here. Go to the, cut off just one of the sections that da 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 part. Uh, so Command T to trim. I'm going to Command C to copy. Let's go let's hit Command V to paste. That will happen sometimes. So Command C paste. 
will it let me yeah command v here and just give myself that last little note to play through so what it sounds like is everything's going and that'll be the end of the song uh, of course if you remember automation with a it's really useful at this point because what if you you want to kind of uh, fade things out so if I took the volume on the top one add some you know handles to it and I add to add a couple because I want to leave the volume um, here the same so I would drag this over here and I would drag this down so that it fades leading into where this part takes over so this part takes over. Another thing I would do maybe even too is on this top line, pan it. So I'd have it pan all the way. So the green line is going to be in the middle. Right now you see that, that it's in the both speakers. Maybe have it all the way over to your left ear. And this part, which is the other choral part, you know, the other thing that we're listening to, go to panning. And I would move it all the way to your right ear. So when you're listening to it, the beat's in the middle. This part is in your left ear, this part's in your right ear, so you can hear it in different areas. All right, so that's just a common structure, just some basic principles. Layer, pay attention when you introduce parts. Uh, don't overcomplicate the beats. Uh, try to find a way to close your song off, maybe build towards something, and uh, just work with your automation to you know, do some fading, add some reverb, make it interesting. All right, I hope this was useful for you.